Hey everybody, welcome to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, we are broadcasting live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Tonight is a Bigfoot topic. Uh, before we get started, I do want to uh, let everybody know that we are on Facebook, facebook.com uh, forward slash Paratruth Radio. We are also on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash Paratruth Radio. You can also hit us up in our chat room if you are on a computer and um, you can also call in to listen or give us your opinion our guest line is 914-205-5558 so tonight is Bigfoot and um, I think everybody kind of approaches the Bigfoot phenomenon from a uh, What's the word I'm looking for, Eric? I have no clue, sir. <laughs> um, I don't know where you're going with this. A skeptical view. Ah, okay. Um, uh, I disagree. Not everyone does. Well, not Especially everyone. on the TV shows. Yeah, but most um, most Americans that are not into the paranormal that much kind of go more into uh, skeptical over that's real. Yeah. So... Um, to go over a little bit what we've both kind of researched is Bigfoot is known as Sasquatch. Uh, there's other names for him, such as the Grassman in Ohio. Um, is there any other names you came across? Well, obviously the Yeti, which... Oh, the Yeti, yeah. Depending on where you're from, you know, where you're living. Um, I think a lot of people consider the Yeti more of a uh, cold yeah. area, you know... Bigfoot, more or less. <clears throat> um, also, the skunk ape is a pretty close resemblance to uh, Bigfoot. Um, I, I would say, this is kind of different. It's known as the uh, sheep squatch. Okay. Which it's like half, you know, kind of like it's a like half man, half sheep, basically. But uh, it, it's in the same genre, Bigfoot type thing. So, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of uh, similarities between a lot of those creatures, minus a couple of details here and there. One thing that I I did notice was it, going back even into the 18, 1800s, there are legends of not necessarily ape men, but wild men mm-hmm. for us. And um, I really didn't see too many similarities between Bigfoot and the wild men, though, other than hair covering the body. Is re- is that all you found? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and of course, I mean, it depends. I, I, I guess the biggest difference, it doesn't go into specifics with the wild men. You know, we, we see Bigfoot being somewhere between seven feet and nine feet, which is a pretty big difference uh, for full grown Bigfoot if they exist. Uh, the wild men, it doesn't really specify how big they are, but I'm assuming that the wild men are more average in height. Somewhere between, you know, five and six feet, most likely. Um, as for the hair, I mean, I think a lot of people consider Bigfoot, obviously, having natural hair head to toe with these wild men. In a number of studies that I've looked into or uh, uh, theories and whatnot, wore more like a skin of some sort, you know, like an animal skin oh, to make yeah. them appear as if they had these, you know, yeah, kind of become animalistic over their time in the wild, basically. Yeah, that's kind of what I've come across too through my studies like even not even doing through Bigfoot but I've heard of the wild men from long ago and it's kind of a different uh, legend compared to Bigfoot Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the stuff that I saw here was like 1924 was the most reported um, starting at other than the legends in the 1880s of the wild men for the Bigfoot phenomenon. Right. So um, what are your thoughts or theories as to the, like where, where the Bigfoot might legend might've come from compared to what your personal beliefs are? Um, <clears throat> well, I think people in general, 
always like to lean towards the mysterious aspect of the world, things they don't understand. Um, it, it, we see it time and time again throughout history uh, in regards to vampires and werewolves and you know pretty much any cryptid that we come across, uh, even the chupacabra, which is more or less a glorified coyote with mange. Yeah. Um, in, in most instances, depending on what you know story you're reading mm. or for folklore. Um, honestly, I think for the most part, the Bigfoot is uh, so what I'm looking for. Uh, I, know, I guess misinterpreted, mis. It's the word I'm looking for, man. Uh, let me find it. I know it's in our research here. <laughs> Misidentified. Misidentified. That's the word I'm looking for, people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably, it's probably mostly misidentified. You, know, you, you see beer, bears in uh, the wild that, that from time to time they stand up on their rear legs to look out over a ridge or to try to grasp something from a tree. And I think that some people who might have been in the woods, you know, early on before we had all these cameras and the understanding of the creatures around and so on and so forth, might have just uh, misidentified. Uh, identified them um, and, and you know like when you're in the woods you, your mind starts playing tricks on you if you start becoming fearful uh, fear plays a big part in our imagination and we can turn pretty much any normal creature into something really scary or misunderstood or whatever that's kind of the thought I had too um, I, I mean you see it like with a lot of the evidence which really in all regards, there isn't much evidence whatsoever yeah. uh, supporting the uh, supporting uh, a living uh, Bigfoot. Um, but the ones that we do see, we always find as again misidentification, such as bears that may or may not have had mange and mm. just looked a little off. Uh, uh, a number of different hoaxes. Uh, unfortunately, there's been tons upon tons of ho- hoaxes in the past. Yeah. Um. And, and it's just ways, you know. I think you and I, when uh, we did the uh, at the 2012 thing, so many years ago. Yeah. It's actually only been two years ago, but it feels like so many years ago. <laughs> um. I mean, it, a lot of people believed in it, you know, in the Crystal Skull and all this and that. Yeah. But in reality, it was nothing more than a scheme to make money. And when you do the research and you start looking into uh, the Sasquatch and the number of hoaxes that have been created uh, based off of Bigfoot and how much money these people made off of these hoaxes, it's no wonder that there's people, you know, starting hoaxes. Uh, One guy made $60,000 pretending that he had a Bigfoot in ice uh, when in reality it was just rubber feet and some camel hair and so on and so forth just to make it look real. I saw Um, a documentary on that particular hoax when – when the um what was his name um god where is it oh when biscardi and his team bought that the that uh that fake um hmm. sasquatch off of those guys and then this guy tried to do it again after that hoax and said he hunted down a sasquatch and then told everybody, no, I just had somebody make up a suit. Right. But if I'm mistaken, he, he also went on to say, if we're talking about the same guy, he went on to say that it was a fake suit because he was too afraid to bring the real Sasquatch out in fear that someone would steal it. But the truth is he really did kill a Sasquatch. He just doesn't have it with him. Um, which, you know, obviously after, after saying you have something, then being caught in a hoax and then going on to say, well, you really do have it. The hoax is just a hoax of a hoax. I mean, it's like, where's your credit? You know, you have no credibility anymore. Yeah. Shut up and go home. Um, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people, I mean, it's just all for glory and fun, mostly. Um, same with, uh, this is going back to Aliens last week, which is something we didn't cover at all, surprisingly, um, were crop circles. Um, a lot of people think that crop circles are from extraterrestrials that bring the UFOs down and create these symbols and designs. Um, but there's a number of different people who actually go out in the fields and create these symbols themselves. And it's very intricate at how they go about doing this. And it's amazing at how much work they can put into a single night and make this thing 
on the side of a football field and it be merely perfect, um, almost as if it looks like an alien ship had landed there. Um, and I think just with a lot of this stuff, a lot of, especially the cryptids, you know, there's just a lot of pokes, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, there have been way too many people, specifically with the Bigfoot in general, making hoaxes, not only with fake bodies, but the the footprints and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that's been said in our chat here from Digger Dog, um, that he's hunted bears growing up, and there is a difference. And I agree, Digger Dog, that there is a possibility that there is a Bigfoot, but there also can be uh, misidentification as well, which I'm not saying that the black bear theory is the right theory, but that is one of those theories out there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, there's so many evidence. There's scientists who have said there is enough evidence to say that this thing is real, but to what degree they don't know. There's scientists that have said that there's just no evidence whatsoever to say that this thing is absolutely a the uh, creature of existence other than through hoaxes or myth. Right. Well, in, in regards to science, um, you think of fur or hair samples that people bring in all the time to be scientists. And we see it in books and on television especially, you know, where that's like their prime uh, – <clears throat> It's their prime uh, samples or whatever they bring in. Um, and, and the fur, I think once that I know have has come back as unidentified. You know, it doesn't pair up with any other creature whatsoever. Um, but most of them come back as either bear or wolf or a deer, deer of some sort. Yeah. Um, and again, it just all goes back to misinterpretation. Um, I mean, obviously people want to believe in something like the Bigfoot because, let's face it, it would be pretty cool. Um But when it comes down to it, for as little sightings as there are, there just simply isn't – there can't possibly – it's hard to explain. But there's got to be a greater population in order for the Bigfoot to continue living on for as many years as it's been seen um, or has been talked about. It would have to be bigger than a couple sightings. Right. Maybe 150, 180 sightings that I've seen. Yeah, I mean, we should be seeing a lot more if they are real, um, but we don't. So I, I just think it's all in the, ma- the imagination, more or less. Well, Digger Dog uh, corrected us. It's actually 30,000 plus. That is a great amount, but you would think by now we would have some type of evidence other than speculation and just footprints. There is a lot of big hunter Bigfoot hunters out there that are doing things to make these things be proven real, but mm-hmm. at this point, there is no true evidence to say that, yes, Bigfoot is a creature uh, of existence and that um, that it's a possibility that it's out there. It, it's all speculation right now, and um, we'll get more into it in just a minute. Um, we're going to do our Eric's Random Fact of the Day as well as a quick break, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Now, Eric's Random Facts of the Day. There is a creature known to cryptozoologists as Bigfoot. It was given the name after several people had found multiple footprints of massive size in the wilderness. However, did you know that there is a person who holds the world record for having the world's largest feet? His name is Brahim Takiola. According to the Guinness World Records, the 29-year-old man who currently lives in Paris, France, has feet measuring approximately 1 foot and 3 inches in length, or in other words, 14 inches. Considering a study of 1,197 North American adult Caucasian males, the average man's foot at the age of 35 is approximately 26.3 centimeters or 10.35 inches long. I think that many Bigfoot researchers would agree that Bahim has one big foot.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Paratruth Radio, guys. For you just tuning in, uh, we are talking about Bigfoot. If you would like to uh, check us out on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Paratruth Radio. Hit the like button. You can find us on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash Paratruth Radio, and hit the follow button. Uh, you can also reach us in our chat on every live show and also on our guest line, which is 914-205-5558. Um, I do just have to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Shelly, who has uh, decided to be a part of the show as our producer, but tonight is not. She's just listening in. So I'd like to thank her on taking that responsibility on for us. And... Um, Getting back into uh, Bigfoot and um, the theories out there, um, because Digger Dog is raising a very good point of uh, a couple of videos being the gate of these creatures that are being caught on camera. Um, one of the most uh, famous Bigfoot videos is the Patterson uh, Gimlin film from 1967. Anybody who knows anything about Bigfoot knows about this film. And uh, even Hollywood at the time had said uh, we could try, but we would have to create a completely new system of artificial muscles and find a, an actor who could be trained to walk like that. It might be done, but we would have to say that it would be almost impossible. So is there a possibility that all of these are hoaxes? Absolutely. But it was, it's starting to be a little improbable with some of the videos that are caught because of the way that these creatures are walking on video. Um, but it is possible that it can be faked. What are your thoughts on the, the uh, Patterson Gimlin film? You've seen it before, haven't you? Many times. And what do you think? Um, personally, I mean, I think it can be mimicked very easily too. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, really, and in regards to the muscle definition and all that, I mean, this film doesn't really give us a, as much detail as we think it does. Uh, this camera I mean, that was used is really old. I mean, the, the actual uh, footage itself isn't clear. It's kind of choppy, uh, fuzzy. I mean, there's just not much to go by. Um, what's interesting is that these people, they decided to take this film, you know, Patterson and uh, Gimlin, and they shot it from a good distance away, right? But they didn't bother to zoom in any closer or chase after it to get a better shot. They just kept hiding the whole time. And why? I mean, if this is something that's been you know, hidden for centuries, for all we know, um, and people have been out on the lookout for this thing, I mean, why not chase it down? Um, and I understand that probably if, if it's real and they really did come across it, there's a sense of fear there because you don't know what it can do. But I've seen this video re-mimicked, and it, it's been done pretty accurately. So I, I'm going to say it's more than possible that this video is indeed fake. Yeah, I mean, it, unfortunately, and Digger Dog put another video that's out there, and we will touch base on that, Digger Dog, in a minute um, after the next break. Um, unfortunately, the, there is just so much hoax out there that even if this thing is real, there's so much skepticism in it because people are faking it. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a lot of people that are like, there's no way this is real because first off, we would have a bunch more evidence, which granted, I agree, we should have more other than hair samples. And there have been scat samples collected, which are usually rounded up to other species. Um, and it, it can be faked. Is it possible that all these are, all these are hoaxes and fakes? It's a possibility that they're not all hoaxes. Absolutely. Our personal opinion though, is, is it's been hoaxed so much that it seems more of a hoax than it is a reality. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, Digger Dog, this is just our opinion. I give you your opinion as well, and I agree that there could be cover-up. There could be a possibility that these things are out there. But from our understanding and our personal 
uh, viewpoints, there's just been way too many hoaxes to to say that these videos of evidence are true evidence of these creatures. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. I've there are many many Bigfoot researchers out there now that are trying to find these things. <laughs> I'm sh I'm pretty sure there's a show or there was going to be a show of $1 million Bigfoot hunt or something like that. Did you mm -hmm. have anything like that? Yeah, I watched a bit of it. It was it, – I wasn't a fan. Simple <laughs> as that. <laughs> I'm not, not going to go and put my two cents into it too much, but it was ridiculous in my opinion. Um, I, I, I don't know. When it comes down to it, I mean – there's got to be hundreds, if not at least a couple thousand of uh, so-called researchers or investigators of this particular cryptid. Um, <clears throat> I think that based on the evidence that they claim to find, which is the first samples, the scat samples, the footprints, which many times now, these footprints they claim to have been, they've found fresh, you know, near uh, lake beds and so on and so forth. Um if they're that close, where the footprint is that fresh or the scat's that fresh, how is it that they still haven't come across it? I mean, they, look how big this creature is. It, it's claimed to be elusive, but it can't move that fast. Right. I mean, so based on the way it's walking and the size of it, it's not moving very fast at all. Um, and it's, in my opinion, unless there's really big caves or deep underground caverns, it's not going to be hiding very well either. Yeah. Um, but that's just in my opinion. I mean, I just don't think that any evidence out there support their existence whatsoever. And I personally don't believe in them. Well, and I don't know a whole lot about the Northwest U.S. Like, a lot of the sightings have been in Wa Washington, Oregon, mm -hmm. um, around there, as well as uh, mid-central area of America. And the reason we brought up the black bear theory is because they have placed – these particular sightings of Bigfoot, along with the black bear uh, community, and it's almost identical in sightings to black bear uh, sightings and community as the Bigfoot. So is it possible that these are misidentifications as well? Absolutely, it's a possibility because people are frightened without any thought other than their survival. So if they see something that scares the living crap out of them, they're going to see something way bigger and way scarier than what it really is. Mm -hmm. um, the other possibility is there are caves that these things are going into. Is there a possibility that they're going deeper than humans can? Absolutely. There's a possibility, but again, high probability I highly doubt that these things are are way more elusive than any other creature that there is out there. Right. Um, one of the theories out there is um, Bigfoot is a relic of Gigantopithecus. And if anybody knows anything about Gigantopithecus, this ape creature was at least – twice the size as Bigfoot has been reported to be. So the fact that it can be anything close to, to Gigantopithecus is blown out of my mind 100% that it's even any relation. Is it possible that, it, that it's some type of breed somewhere in between humanity and Gigantopithecus? Maybe. Um, there's other uh, possibilities. Extinct hominid hominidae which uh, the Paranthropus uh, robustus that had a crested skull and was bipedal. Uh, Gigantopithecus was not bipedal because of its size. As far as they can tell, it was uh, quadrupedal. Um, and a lot of these different um, species have never been found in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, the one was found... Um, there was one found in Santa Cruz, California, and that was uh, Meganthropus, and it was a tooth, nothing more than that. Um, but again, that has mostly been 
in Asia and Russia and those those areas. Um, some suggest Neanderthal, uh, Homo erectus, or Homo heidelbergensis um, to be what these creatures are. And again, Neanderthal, to, as far as what we know it through science, looks completely different than what these particular creatures are being uh, described as, right? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, there are some similarities. Um, the brow ridge, for example, is pretty close. Um, the way the, not necessarily the facial features, but uh, I think it's mostly the top of the head, the, the brow ridge, the eyes, the skull itself, the top of the skull, is very similar to what they claim Bigfoot looks like. Um, and of course, I mean, it depends on the Neanderthal. Um, I think different areas around the world, they look a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of these Neanderthals weren't really, you know, we, we think of Neanderthals as cavemen, more or less, you know, people who weren't necessarily brilliant, per se. Um, but some claim that Neanderthals are just a, just a normal human who had a disease of sort, which caused their uh, mutations within the bones themselves, uh, giving them a particular look. And of course, people, scientists in particular, being who most of them are, uh, claim as a completely different species, per se, you know. Um, still human, but... <clears throat> a subhuman yeah. in nature. Yeah. Um, and like we've, we said at the beginning, sci- scientific-wise, uh, from science scientists, they're basically saying, for the most part, that there is no way that Bigfoot is – there's no credible scientific evidence that Bigfoot is a actual creature, but nothing but more than legend and myth. And like I said, there are researchers out there, Bigfoot researchers out there, um, and we'll kind of touch base a little bit more at the very end about a little more um, – possibilities that kind of go with our previous topic which is aliens um but i don't know to me there is just way too little evidence for it to be anything more than hoaxes at this point um and unfortunately with humans unless you throw something straight in their face you can't say that it's real but at the same time there are possibilities out there. Mm-hmm. And um, we will have, I'm sure, plenty of guests that will give us their opinions on, on all of these uh, cryptic creatures. Um, there are supposed extinct creatures now coming back from extinction um, that we thought were completely died off. So is it possible that these things are species that are just barely lingering? Yeah, I'd say that's a a good possibility as well. Um, But for the most part, these hoaxers have kind of shot out any real reasoning to say that Bigfoot is in existence, in my opinion. Um, Well, here's going back to the black bear thing. Um, the Bigfoot Research Organization, they posted a photo uh, years, a few years back um, of a what they claim to be a juvenile Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can find this in the majority of area places, but I actually just posted that as a link in our chat room. So if anyone wants to go in there and check it out. Um, <clears throat> it's the one that I posted is from wikipedia.org just because it was right there. Uh, it's easy to see. Below that, I posted another image of an actual black bear with mage. And I want you to just look at it and tell me if you see any similarities between the two because what the uh, Bigfoot Research Organization is claiming to be a juvenile Sasquatch in reality really does just look like a black bear with mange. Um, it, yeah, it has a lot of similarities, especially with – it looks like the – Black Bear's head is going past that tree in that in the supposed uh, juvenile Bigfoot. Yeah, 
But I mean, it's the same. I mean, if you just look at it compared to the other picture I post, you see the arch back. Mm. They're the same. The way that back leg is straightened, that right leg, is very similar to the other po- picture I posted of the bear. Of the bear. Mm. Um, I mean, just some of the stuff I think that they're posting isn't legit by any means. Well, like, and most of these things are being taken with night vision cameras, mm-hmm. um, which are easily blurred, by the way. Um, and also, I don't know, like, with the ears of the bear, I can understand why people would think that the image of the juvenile Bigfoot may look different, but uh, a night vision camera could black those out. Right, it just doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's a good spot to do our next break. Uh, we'll touch base a little bit on the uh, UFO alien connection to Bigfoot. Um as well as a near, another theory that I came across uh, that was a little interesting, but still was sloughed off as nothing more than uh, a hoax or people misinterpreting what might have been going on. Um, so we're going to take another quick break here, folks, and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hello, everybody. Sublimely Elegant here, as always, and guess what? I know you. Well, no, we've never met, but I do know you. I know you love Minecraft. I know you love the internet. Now, I also happen to know you love colorful language. So, instead of moping around all day, why don't you head on over to my channel and satiate your deepest needs? YouTube.com forward slash Sublimely Elegant.
Hey everybody, my name is Eric. I'm Justin. And you are listening to Forgotten Truth. See, is now right? you did it. You did it. I did it that time, man. I did it that time. <laughs> uh, the Pair of Truth Radio. <laughs> we got to get a hang of that. <laughs> man. Unfortunately, mixing the two shows is way too It's getting us all mixed up. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, if you've been hanging out with us this whole hour, thank you. It's nice to have you around. Uh, hit us up in chat. We'd like to talk with you. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, well, let me tell you what's going on here. Justin and I are discussing the Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. Uh, we are discussing whether or not it exists, and if it does exist, why can't we find it? Indeed. And whether or not, or, or does it not exist, and if it doesn't exist, then why has it become such a great legend? Yeah. Um, we have gone through a number of different possibilities and theories already this episode. Um, many, many theories out there as to what Bigfoot is. Mm-hmm. Um, is it human? Is it ape? Is it a mix of the two? Uh, is it something completely different, which is actually what we're going to be discussing next? Is there a possibility that Bigfoot is extraterrestrial? Um Justin, I want to uh, just go ahead and ask you right away. I mean, what is your opinion on this? Do you think that Bigfoot has come here in some mothership from another planet? Um, no. Uh, I do believe there are extraterrestrials out there. Um, whether we've been contacted by them or not, I, I'm not sure. Uh, the only link that there is is uh, the fact that there have Bigfoot – been Bigfoot sightings and UFO sightings uh, in the same area at the same time on occasion. Um, but, and to touch on our show last episode, in those instances where there's UFO sightings um, or alien abduction cases where they're seeing things that aren't there, in your opinion, do you think it's a possibility that demonic oppression is, is uh, a factor in that particular case with extraterrestrials? Uh, with extraterrestrials, I mean, it is uh, po- Bigfoot part of their imagery. Uh, I mean, it is a possibility. I mean, you know, we discussed last uh, episode how demons have the ability to manipulate and take on any shape that they wish. Um, and that could be something... I'm not going to say it's simple because we can't do any of this. <laughs> yeah. So it's obviously not simple. But taking on the form of a dog to taking on something as big as a werewolf, for example, um, uh, upon uh, as well as a number of other things, uh, actually appearing as an angel itself, you know, bright, white, got the glowing, you know, the typical thing you would see or understand the Bible says about angels. Um, do I think whether or not it's 100% possible that demons are – Pretending to be big, but and, uh, I, it, I mean, I personally don't believe in Bigfoot at all, so I'm going to say it's possible, not necessarily likely. Right. It's possible. Right. Um, I'm just saying possibility is not. Yeah, I mean, when you, you really have to go into the, I guess you got to get an idea of like who's seeing the creature and what is their background. Mm. Um, there was a show on a number of years ago now. Uh, about a guy who and his family who's living in a uh, cabin in the woods. Mm. Uh, and over time, they started witnessing something creepy, you know, demonic in nature. And one of the things that they witnessed was a werewolf lurking out in the woods beyond their house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this guy claimed to have been able to see it, full body apparition. Uh, obviously, it looked like an actual werewolf. You know, you couldn't see through it or anything. It looked like a thick mass of whatever animal. Um, and it turns out later on that there was a, uh, Satanist or seance of some sort that happened in that house and they found evidence of it with the pentagrams and everything. And they, they claim that it's possible that it was a demon lurking out in the back, uh, taking the form of a wolf or a werewolf, which is something that this guy greatly feared. Um, I mean, you kind of get an idea of how demons take on the fear uh, of people, you know, they, they they want to scare you, and at the same time, they don't want to scare you. So they're going to do whatever's in their best interest at that time. Um, but I think overall, it is a possibility, but unlikely. I, I think this whole thing about Sasquatch is something a little different. 
Um, yeah, well, and the only reason I bring that up is because of the fact that there are people linking UFOs and Bigfoots together. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we touched on last episode. Right. The one uh, case that I saw, before I get into that, um, I watched a little bit of the video that Digger Dog posted in our chat room. Mm-hmm. And the the first thing that this guy in this video says is he doesn't believe that a human can move the way that this thing does. Okay. In other words, this is his particular opinion. Mm-hmm. It is not fact. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is it possible that these things are real? Yes, I I believe it's a possibility. Is it very probable? No, I don't think so at all. And just for someone to start out saying, I don't think humans can move like this, goes to show that this guy is not putting too much fact into his own particular opinion. Right. He's not taking the effort to study it more. So um, going into uh, a theory that goes back to 1924 um, from Fred Beck, and I've heard this story before. Uh, He did write a book in 1967 about this particular uh, sighting or uh, event uh, that these ape men were throwing rocks at a cabin that him and a couple of people were staying in, um, that they shot at these creatures and might have killed one of them. Um, and that they bombarded the, the cabin uh, and tried to break in. Uh, in the book, he says that he thinks that they were mystical beings from another dimension, uh, claiming to experience psychic premonitions and visions his entire life, of which the ape men were only one component. Uh, Harry Halliday uh, brought up the fact that uh, there was a story that arose that an incident in which hikers from nearby camp had thrown rocks into the canyon as well as uh, local rumors that pranksters were harassing men and leaving fake footprints at the scene. Mm-hmm. And that goes to show a little bit, too, of the hoaxer side, as well as peop- what people believe. Right. Uh, so that kind of falls into the category of, are these things something otherworldly, too? Um, because this guy believed that they were mystical beings from another dimension which if you you think about it are exactly what demons are they're from another dimension other than ours which is hell Mm -hmm. what we believe as hell um so the fact that he is saying that they're mystical beings kind of makes me think well is it possible he was having some type of demonic situation going on too um Along with the whole UFO uh, Bigfoot theory and mm-hmm. what we talked about last episode, um, I think it, it's a possibility, but as you said, very improbable as well, just because of there's only a few different variations to this story, and one of them is the UFO Bigfoot connection, and the other one is this uh, gentleman who said they were mystical beings from another dimension. Right. Let me tell you something. I mean, no, no. Let's just say, all right, let's just say a demon is involved, all right? It appears as a Bigfoot once. One person sees it, starts spreading the rumor. People are so gullible these days, and even more so back in the 1800s, 1700s, and so forth, um, that it just takes off. Now, we no longer need demons doing anything because people are just going to start imagining these on their own. Um I've said it earlier at the beginning of the show. It's amazing how much the imagination can do and what it can come up with. Uh, We don't need much uh, to create a Sasquatch. I mean, it's already there in our imagery, um, in our imagination, based off the photos and the videos that we've seen. And how many times do you see a shadow out the corner of your eye? Or how many times do you drive down the road and you think you see something crossing in front of you, but there's nothing there? Yeah. Uh, You know, it's all an illusion, that's coming from your imagination because in your imagination you're you fear that there's something in front of you at night in the road, you know. Yeah. And you start to see it, and it's the same thing for those in the people in the woods uh, who claim to have seen it but have no video evidence or any other type of uh, support to back them up. Uh, so I don't, I just think it's I again the, kind of wrapping up the show. 
in my personal opinion, I don't believe the Sasquatch to exist simply based on the lack right. of evidence uh, that we have. One thing that we kind of touched on last episode two or last two episodes is, you know, maybe people are manifesting manifesting these things into existence for a brief moment because they think that's what they see, which creates these particular phenomenon that's going on um, because the human mind can do some really weird shit. Huh. Um, but at the same time, imagination and fear are a much more likely factor than manifesting oh. a creature into existence or it's actual, it, you know, it's a real thing. Yeah. I mean, think of like for everyone listening who agrees or disagrees with us, I mean, think of your child or children that you know of um, who claim to see the monster in their closet or under their bed. You know, I mean, these kids literally believe that they've witnessed something. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember uh, with the, I was with the family and I was riding my <clears throat> three wheeler, my big wheel, you know, through the park, uh, Bedford uh, Metro Park, and I looked off to my to my left and I was up ahead quite a bit and I saw what I thought was a bear uh, standing up against a tree, and this scared the daylights out of me and I hurried back and rode back to the family, and when we got back to the area where I saw it, it was gone. Mm. Now anyone who knows Bedford knows that there's no bear in Bedford. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it simply just uh, had to be imagination, you know? And, I mean, anyone who's anyone <laughs> has had their imagination so out of whack at some point. Mm. They've claimed to have seen something, even though that what they've seen, you know, couldn't have possibly been there. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, man. I had the same thing happen to me as a kid. Uh, there was a path going to Convenient and Maple Heights, and if I ever walked through that path, there was woods on or wooded area on both sides. And my imagination would run wild. And I would think I'd see things in, in the trees or the branches and it would freak me out. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, a squirrel's laughing at you. Like what the heck is that idiot doing? <laughs> Running like little pansy. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I do have to touch real fast. Next week's episode, we'll be having on David Rufino um, of um, – what's the name of the book? I'm sorry. Unholy Communion. Unholy Communion uh, about extraterrestrial alien abduction. Uh, so we will see you guys next week. Eric might not be a part of the show, so tune in. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. And we are Paratruth Radio. Peace.